and I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm Kristen, also known as Woolen Vine, here on my YouTube channel where I chat about what I'm knitting, what I'm sewing, what I'm making, or whatever crafty rabbit hole I happen to be diving down this week. And as always, I'm so happy that you're taking some time out of your day to chat about all those fun things with me. And this week is yet another knitting heavy episode. I do not have much sewing to share with you this week because because life, and I will, I will get more into that during the episode. But first, we have a couple of announcements. Of course, we have our year-long make-along, which is currently underway, and that is the history make-along, where we're all endeavoring to make something historically inspired um, so choose a time period or an era that you're drawn to and make something inspired by it, be it knitting, sewing, weaving, crochet, embroidery, whatever your craft is, you're welcome to join. There are two ways to join, and the first is to hop on over to the Vol & Vine Ravelry group where there is a thread dedicated to this make-along. All you have to do is partake in the chatter, share your projects, your FOs, your whips, and Come March 2021, I will lock that thread and choose a winner at random for a giveaway prize. And the second way to participate is to head on over to Instagram. And yes, double dipping is completely okay and welcome. So hop on over to Instagram and post your makes using hashtag HistoryMAL. Same rules apply, March 1st, 2021. I will lock, I will, I will, I can't lock anything in Instagram, but I can choose a random winner, whoever uses that hashtag and shares their makes. Again, this has been such a fun and inspiring make along. It's, you know, even if you're not partaking, it's just fun to keep up and see what everyone's making. I sound like it's coming to a close. It's not, we still have several months left. So there's still time to hop on board. Please do so if you haven't already and this sounds like something that you'd be into. Um, and speaking of something that you might be into, uh, this channel is sponsored by Skillshare, which is an online learning community platform where you can learn pretty much anything, be it uh, a new craft uh, technique when it comes to knitting or sewing. I use it all the time for that and so much more, especially when it comes to my online craft business or Villain Vine Yarns, my hand-dyed yarn company. I use it for uh, learning marketing skills, business skills, and you name it, Skillshare has it. Uh, and again, if that's something that you're into, you can try Skillshare for two weeks, absolutely free on yours truly. And thank you, Skillshare. All right, my friends, I have yet another FO to share with you this week. I know, I know, who am I? Last week I shared a new hat pattern that I'm designing or that I have designed. <laughs> and this is the Kellen Mai hat, which is a companion hat pattern to the Kel and my cowl, which is back here. Um, I'll try and pop an image of what the cowl looks like, but I have since designed a year later <laughs> a hat to go along with it, if, if that's your thing. Or if you just want the hat, you can just knit the hat. If you just want the cowl, you can just knit the cowl. The world is your oyster. This hat is knit out of my hand dyed yarns, Villain Vine yarns on my Sorial worsted base, which is 100% superwash merino wool. Um, very, very soft, very, very toasty. Um, and yes, there are beads included in the hat pattern, but look at the, the crown. The crown is like my favorite part of this, guys. Um, so I will try it on so you can see what it looks like. It is a slouchy hat, but it is designed to have a bit of negative ease, so it fits very snugly around your head to keep you warm. But since the last episode, I have since knit yet another Kalamai hat and same hat pattern, same design. It's just knit out of DK weight. So this is a uh, knit out of my Smitten DK base, which is a lovely, luscious uh, merino nylon cashmere blend. Uh, again, DK weight. And the reason why I knit two versions, one out of worsted and the other out of DK, uh, the worsted version is worsted weight yarn and it's up super quick. So if you wanna crank out a couple of holiday gifts, Worsted is usually the way to go if you want to make that happen. Uh, the other reason is because the cowl is actually knit uh, out of DK weight yarn. Um, actually, it is uh, lace weight held together with fingering weight yarn, which when combined held together, it creates a DK weight yarn. So if you you know want to make a matchy matchy set, you can totally do that or just use DK weight yarn, uh, which I did here. And I included beads as well. Um, and yeah, it's real, it's not, it's not the same exact size, but it's ballpark. So, um, you know, this is how this version fits, uh, and crazy hat hair. Let me see. 
But uh, when it comes to sizing, I included three sizes. So there's the adult small, medium, and large. The small fits a 20 and a half inch circumference head, 21 0.5 inch circumference head and then 22.5 circumference head, but it's going to be so easy for you to size up and down from there All you have to do is add or subtract an extra repeat of the pattern So it's it's super easy to size if you want to go up or down um, With the given measurements. Uh, so yeah, I'm trying to think what else I want to say about this other than it is currently being test knit uh, Thank you. Thank you so much to everyone who has reached out to me about test knitting. I am good for now Thank you. Um, I have some wonderful, wonderful test knitters that are working super hard behind the scenes and have been so incredibly helpful. And yeah, I love you guys if you're watching. So if you want to keep up with their progress, do check out hashtag CallanMyHat. Uh, or if you know when this pattern does come out, you can use that uh, hashtag as well to share your hats. Um, and yeah, I am hoping to publish this within the next few weeks. Uh, once my test knitters are done, I'm gonna hand it off to my tech editor, Faye. You will be getting an email from me. <laughs> so, um, you know, guys, watch this space. Uh, I'm, I'm so excited for this pattern to come out. Uh, so yeah, so yeah, we have Kalamai hat worsted, Kalamai hat DK. Very, very excited. Next up, I have a whip. Yeah, it is It is still in whip form, guys. I was hoping to have this done to show off this week, but alas, here we are. I'm still whipping my way on my nurtured sweater, a pattern by Andrea Maori. Uh, and yeah, it is, it is so close to being done, guys, so close. Um, as you can see, I am now currently doing the short row shaping on the, the back of the neck, uh, which a lovely viewer, I'm completely blanking on her name as I usually do, um, pointed out that it is not to accommodate our Quasimodo hunchbacks, but in fact, short row shaping along the back of the neck on a sweater is meant to accommodate for the length of our backs. Our backs are generally longer <laughs> than our fronts. So that is why the most important reason why short row shaping is included on the back of uh, sweaters and jumpers and, and the like. So yeah, I will be totally honest. I had to rip back a little bit last night because I realized that my stitch counts were totally off between the, the sleeves and the front and the back. None of them were matching up. So I had to rip back a little bit and, um, I'm not sure where I'm, I messed up on my stitch counts, but but I really didn't feel like ripping back all the way to figure out where I messed up. So um, the stitch counts were relatively ballpark close to each other. So I did did kind of fudge it a little bit, but honestly, I don't think you're gonna be able to tell. So, um, you know, especially when working with dark yarns, just fudge it if you made a little mistake. I'm all about fudging mistakes, making it work, uh, you know. Tim gun all the way. I just have to finish doing the short rows, which is kind of a mind twister because you're dealing with um, slip stitching and I, I don't know, it's a little confusing. So I have to kind of take my time with this part, but next time, next time, I promise <laughs> I will have a finished sweater to share with you. I mean, how can I not at this point? Something terrible would have to happen. I don't know, I, the cat would, no, let, let's not go there. Okay, anyway, next time I will have a finished sweater to share with you. All right, next up is a work in progress that I have not shown off on the podcast or channel for quite some time, only because this is kind of an ongoing project that I don't really have an end date in sight. It'll end when it ends. And anyway, um, I thought I would give you a little update on it, on where I am, how far I've gotten. But this is, my Battenberg blanket, let me see, it's growing. It hasn't grown very much since I last showed it to you, but here we are. I'm already grafting quite a few squares together and I have no idea what I'm doing, honestly. It's, it's just a Battenberg blanket of <sighs> choose your own adventure. I don't know, that's the only way I can describe it, but um, I should really start weaving in the ends, but here is what it looks like on the Back. This is a free crochet pattern by Sandra Paul or Cherry Heart on Ravelry. Um, and I love the way she has you graft the, the squares together. She um, has you do it from the back using a crochet hook, obviously. And then on the front, um, you can see this is the same method that I use to graft the, the two sections of my vintage Lady Sirdar pullover together. Um, you can see it creates that really neat kind of vertebrae. Um, although it's not as prominent on the blanket as it is on my sweater. Um, but still, it's just a really great way of grafting um, 
pieces of crochet together. So that's how the grafting is going. As far as the squares are concerned, I have quite, I have, I have amassed quite the stack of <laughs> granny squares in here. There are quite a few that I am working on grafting together. So yeah, we've got a lot to work with. Um, and I realized that, and I realized that I am running low on the cream color. I have a plethora of the, the Gumi, the Berger de France Gumi 50 in my stash, but yeah, I am running low on uh, this Regia cream yarn that I purchased from, I think it's lovecrafts.com. They're really great for sock yarn, by the way, guys. If you're looking for those workhorse, um, you know, even the UK uh, workhorse sock yarns, they have a great selection on there. So do check them out. Not endorsed, just a fan. Um, but I did purchase two 100 gram skeins of uh, Regia four ply. I think it's Regia four ply or three ply. I will link to it down below. Um, but yeah, I purchased two uh, several months ago. I'm now, this is all that I have left of the second skein. So I had to, as I like to say, panic order more. So uh, more balls of this yarn should be at my doorstep relatively soon. Uh, so I can continue on um, because I am using this to, you know, obviously make more squares and then I am using it to graft the squares together to just create that neutral cream palette, if that makes any sense. So yeah, that is where I am with that project. Again, this is just going to be an ongoing crochet project that I pull out whenever um, I feel like it. And lately it's just been my companion project when I sit on the sofa knitting with Dennis or we're, you know, barbecuing outside. And you know, it's just a very nice, chill, relaxed project to work on. Highly recommend it. Um, and yeah, and that my friends is all the creative content that I have to share with you this week. No sewing to speak of. I mean, I do, I have put a dent in my coat that I'm making that I showed off with you last week. Um, I am making a muslin. I'm being good. I'm making a muslin. Um, and that is coming together very, 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 very slowly. Um, I guess this will kind of bleed into the blather segment where I chat about life stuff. Uh, but last week I did cut out all the pattern pieces um, and I cut out um, the fabric to make the muslin. So glad I did because I did mess that up royally. So <laughs> let's just say I had to find more scrap fabric to create the muslin. So that has since been cut out and being assembled. Um, it's actually turning out to be a wearable muslin. So that, that's my hopes. Um, I'm using some corduroy and some uh, lining fabric that I've had in my stash. I'll try and insert some photos of it here. But uh, yeah, it's, you know, it's coming together and I'm glad that I'm making a muslin because I'm getting all the mistakes out of my system now. So when I am ready to chop into the really nice fabric that I have for this project, I will know what I'm doing. So yeah, always make a muslin, my friends, even though I am so notorious for not making them. Um, anyway, so that's the, the status on that project. Um, you're probably wondering what I am wearing. This is a, I'm blanking on the pattern number, but this is a pattern by Butterick, super quick and fast to whip up. Um, the fabric is by, uh, Atelier Brunette, uh, which is a French uh, fabric company. And again, really hard to come by in the United States, but I was able to track some down over on Etsy and I will link to it below. But this is easily one of my favorite makes. It's again, a super quick pattern to whip up. It took me maybe under four hours if at, mo at most, I wanna say. All that to say, if you are a beginner sewist, this is a great pattern to start out with, uh, really quick to whip up and clean, simple, easy lines. I will say the, the probably the most difficult part is the scalloped edge. You have to take your time with that, um, but overall just a really simple, easy, Make. As for life stuff, uh, I, I've been roller skating, you guys. Uh, I, well, the past couple of days have been super rainy, so unfortunately I haven't been able to get out, but over the weekend, which is probably one of the reasons why I didn't get too far with my coat, it was a beautiful day out on Sunday, and Dennis and I decided to try this new roller, not was it a new roller rink? New to us roller rink. I'm sure even if you're not from New York, you're all familiar with the Brooklyn Bridge and Brooklyn Heights. There's that uh, historic promenade right 
by the East River that overlooks Manhattan. It's just a really, really beautiful area. Um, several years ago, very recently, they just erected um, this pier, uh, a recreational pier, I wanna say, where they have, you know, tennis, hardball, uh, exercise, just, uh, it, it's kind of like Chelsea Piers, I wanna say, but a more condensed version. Um, but they do have a roller rink in there, and Dennis and I decided to take advantage of the beautiful weather and go check it out. Uh, so yes, Dennis came roller skating with me, and um, you know, it was just a really great day to get out. Um, you know, lots of social distancing happening there, of course, but um, we did check out their roller rink, and I have to be totally honest, I wasn't impressed with it. Um, it did feel a little crowded in there, but we were all wearing our masks, and uh, they're just kids just everywhere, and they had these little walker things on wheels to help propel them while they're learning to skate, but they were just tossing them across the rink, no one was stopping them, and it just felt like a death trap, honestly. So we didn't spend too much time there, but we did We did skate around for about like an hour or so, and Dennis is, you know, I can tell he's getting a little bit better, um, but he, he insists that he's not gonna get into roller skating. He's just doing it to hang out with me and have fun. So anyway, I, I greatly appreciate his, <laughs> his efforts. Um, but yeah, it is really, but yes, it's really fun to go roller skating with him. Um, so that was that. And then the next day on Monday was a gorgeous day. So I got all of my packaging and shipping work out of the way. And then I just took an hour, went to my usual spot in you know this park that I go to in my neighborhood, uh, got an hour of roller skating there. And then the next day was gorgeous. So, you know, you know the drill. Um, but yeah, ever since, I think like, Wednesday, Thursday, and today, it's just been gloomy, rainy, and I, I'm so bummed. I really just wanna get out and go roller skating because I am getting better at it, you guys. I, like any time that I practice and something clicks, it's, I do like a mental dance for joy. It's just, it's awesome. Um, so yeah, I, you know, I'm, I'm gonna be super bummed once the weather gets colder, uh, when I can't practice as often or if at all, I don't know, because you know, cold, snow, me, hi. I don't I don't like being cold very often. So I might have to do some research into where I can go roller skating indoors if possible, uh, in or and around the Brooklyn Bushwick area. Um, I know there are some that are like an hour away from me, but you know, again, it's I need I need it to be in close proximity to where I live. So anyway, maybe I can find a parking lot. We shall see. And I saw on Instagram a few of you guys have gotten into roller skating as well, so that makes me so happy. <laughs> so I hope you guys are having fun with that. Um, that said, I am gonna end things there. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. Uh, if you enjoyed this episode and are new here, welcome. If you haven't already, please feel free to like and subscribe down below. I put out a video for your viewing pleasure every week. Uh, and that said, happy knitting, happy sewing, happy making. Until the next video, <laughs> bye.